In earlier session, we have seen that Galileo's law of free fall and Galileo's law of inertia led Newton to formulate his first and second law of motion. In today's session, we are going to discuss about Newton's third law. So, as you know, Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In order to understand the statement of Newton's third law, let us ask the question, what are the known actions or forces in nature? Till today, we are aware of four types of fundamental forces in nature. And these are gravitational force, the electromagnetic force, the so-called strong force and the weak force. Among these forces, the strong force and the weak force are subnuclear forces. On the other hand, gravitational force or the electromagnetic force can extend over a long range. And these two are the force that comes under the domains of Newton's law. Let us consider the gravitational force between two particles of mass m1 and m2 which positions are described by the position vector r1 and r2 as you see it here. The vector r here is given to be the difference between the vector r2 and r1 that is r vector equal to r2 vector minus r1 vector. So the gravitational force between these two masses is given by f equal to minus g m1 m2 over r square times r cap. Now we can ask the question which mass is acting on whom? Is it m1 acting on the m2 or is it the other way around that is m2 is acting on m1. Answer to this question is in fact both mass are acting on each other. Specifically we can express the gravitational force on m2 due to m1 say f12 is equal to minus gm1 m2 over r square times r cap which we can write also as minus gm1 m2 over r cube times r2 minus r1 vector. Clearly the gravitational force on m1 due to m2 say f21 vector is equal to minus gm1 m2 over r cube times r1 minus r2 vector. Therefore, for gravitational force, we can see that the force on m1 due to m2 is equal and opposite of the force on m2 due to m1 and which is precisely the statement of Newton's third law. Similar arguments also hold true for Coulomb forces and the underlying reason why this statement is true that forces always appear in pairs as it arises due to interaction between two particles. Nevertheless, we can ask the question, is the Newton's third law of motion always valid? In order to answer this question, let us consider two particles. Particle 1 with mass m1 is hanging with a thread whereas the second particle with mass m2 is falling freely as you see it in the diagram. Clearly, the distance between m1 and m2 is changing continuously given the force between m1 and m2 depends on the distance between them. Force between the particle m1 and m2 is also changing continuously as the second particle m2 falls over. Say the particle m2 at the point p1 imparts a force f21 towards the particle m1 and when the reaction force m1 1, 2 from the particle m1 propagates back to particle m2, let's say delta t time has elapsed and the particle m2 
has reached the point P2. So as you see it in the diagram, if the elapsed time delta T is non-zero, then even if the force F12 and F21 have same magnitude, their directions cannot be opposite of each other as seen in the diagram. So in such a situation, Newton's third law of motion is invalid. We can restore the Newton's third law only if the elapsed time delta T is zero. In other words, third law assumes the force propagates at infinite speed. However, we know from Einstein's theory of relativity that no signal can travel faster than speed of light. Therefore, Newton's third law is valid only for particles moving with speed much smaller than the speed of light. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. In case you have a question, comments or a suggestion, please feel free to write them below in the comment section. And if you would like to follow the physics discussion here, then you are welcome to subscribe to this channel.